Hola, Mark. Ah, muy bien. Here we go. Okay. Aquí vamos. Here we go. Let's start this up. Y buenos días. Ah, muy bien. A ver. Ah, uh, okay. ¿Qué vamos a hacer hoy? What are we going to do today? We're going to have your little example examples with que en cual. That won't take very long. Um, we'll hopefully do a little show and tell. Uh, woo. Tengo que buscar mi, mi cosita. I got to look up my little thing. Uy, no está aquí. Okay, bien. Before, uh, we, before we even start the K and Qual discussion, I'm mm -hmm. just going to confess that I'm finding that more complicated than poor and para. Ah, okay. Actually, it is less complicated than poor and para, but... <laughs> Para mí, para mí no es tan complicado, no es un tema tan complicado como por y para. Um, I think when they rank level of difficulty, ser and estar also always gets top ranking. Then por y para comes as a close second and probably quien cual comes as a close third. Oh, if not, maybe, mm, I don't know, maybe that quadrate and imperfect difference, although people eventually get that ironed out. Uh, well, I, didn't, I didn't vote in that survey, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, ¿quién cual? Uh, yeah, you you can overthink it, but it's, um, you know, there are definitely, and, and the problem really starts to become a great big ball of wax or a big tangled ball of yarn or however you want to think about it, mainly because in English, you know, we define qual as which, but sometimes when we actually in English use which, it won't be qual and and vice versa. It's 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 a usage thing and it's uh uh it's a question of their patterns in Spanish, what is customary for their patterns. So, you know, What's your name is either going to be what is your name is either going to be como como te llamas como se llama usted or uh cuál es tu nombre but it's almost never going to be kiss kiss su nombre kiss tu nombre it's never going to be that uh, you know or cuál es la fecha what's the date in English what's the date today pero no es what es cuál es la fecha. Um, so it's a matter of kind of their usage patterns that messes us up <laughs> with that. Um, okay. Tienen ustedes ejemplos. You guys have some examples for quién cuál that you want to share? I'd like to throw out one that is sort of like as I was working on this, this was the one that drove me nuts. Okay. Okay. So I believe the correct way of saying this is uh, que asiento quieres, vacío o ventana? Ah. Which, which seat do you want, um, aisle or window? Si. I got an airplane. But, que a, si. But, but the reason I'm sort of going a little goo goo on this one is I was thinking of the example in the video that we saw, which was, you know, whatever it was. I'll, I mean, I wrote it down after looking up, looking it up again, but it was basically, do you prefer Coke or Pepsi? And there were two very clear choices in the, in the sentence. And qual was very clearly the, choice that the you know the the instructor was using but then sí. i looked back and i saw he said specifically qual de los dos quieres which which of the two sí. and that, that went back to one of the rules that you kind of walked us through qual de which was good so qual de los dos was correct but when i when i wanted to just say which one and I listed the two los dos without saying de los dos. It you know at least Google wanted it to to use K. 
So that to me was kind of keeping me up last night. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, and I'm going to tell you, actually, the way you phrase it may drive it into the qual camp or the K camp. So there is an interesting. Uh, uh, let's take a look at that. Um, okay. Uh, um, ¿Qué asiento, asiento quieres? And I'll put this on screen. I'm, I'm sorry, I kind of talked no, to you there, you're, but that, you're good. That, one, that one was just kind of driving it's me. Okay. The, these are logical things. ¿Qué asiento quieres? What seat do you want? Or which, uh, we might, and you know, we might say in, in English, what seat do you want? Uh, aisle, uh, yeah, uh, window or aisle, right? Um, uh, si, uh, bien, okay. And the real reason we've got que here is because we've got asiento, a noun. So the kicker here is we got a noun. And when I've got that word paired up right next to the noun, generally, que is grammatically, according to the grammar police, the right thing to do. However, there are some Latin Americans who like to plug qual into that formula. So, especially when you give a, you know, two choices, right? Um, so, so, if I were, if instead of que asiento, what if it was phrased as, and I'm just going to put qual in right now, qual de los dos asientos. Which there is, you go. So it's the same noun and it's the same question, but putting in the de los dos switched it from K to cual. Cual de los asientos, okay, está aquí. Cual de los um, asientos uh, quieres? Which one of the which of the seats you want? And now what's driving it is it's really it, it's being driven by structure and word order. When qual de which one of these? Which one of these do you want? And somebody could just phrase it. Uh, you know, let's say they're doing the Vanna White thing of just like showing with their hands. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Ah. Uh, uh, right, one of those. If they're doing one of those, you know, uh, not looking at a computer screen, but it's like, let's say the um, el auxiliar, the the flight attendant, and they're just pointing to one or the other, right? Uh, ¿Cuál quieres? ¿Cuál quieres? Which one do you want? Because they're giving you a choice of two. So you could hear it as any of those, but in the first one, it's being driven by, I'm pairing it up right next door to the noun. So, K okay, is technically correct. But once that word de comes in, which one of, that dictates we use qual. Yeah. So, in other words, nobody would ever say que de, lo, que de los asientos quieres. It's hard for me to even say that because <laughs> it sounds, to, yeah, to my ear, that sounds wrong. And why does it sound wrong? Because I've never heard it that way because nobody ever says it that way. Yeah. So, that de word drives it, I mean, cual. Um, es interesante. It's interesting that that brings it up. Did you have a different one? Marcos, that's a very good example. I, I have a bunch of them, but I, I just wanted to get that one out on the table and, and sort of put my mind at ease that I wasn't truly going crazy. You're not going crazy, no. <laughs> no te vuelves loco. No, 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 no. Tienes, tienes toda la razón. You're completely right. Uh, excelente. Okay. A ver, uh, did you have another example you want to share with us or do we move on, Marcos? Um, well, I, I mean, the others, the others made sense when, um, when I did them, I'll just throw one other out, uh, and, <laughs> okay. K.S. un huracán. 
Ok, sí. ¿Qué es? Uh. ¿Qué es? Un huracán, ¿no? ¿Huracán? Ya. Yeah. ¿Qué es un huracán? ¿Qué es un huracán? Yeah. Well, and you're asking for a definition. Yeah. You want it defined. I don't know what that word is. I don't know what that thing is. Or maybe somebody didn't know what yeah, huracán, hurricane. Bien. Perfecto. And, and, the, and the funny part of that one is I was actually thinking of somebody asking for a definition of the drink hurricane, not the big storm. <laughs> ah, ah, que es un huracán. Okay. Hay dos personas sentadas en el bar y están pidiendo bebidas y alguien, oh, ¿quieres un huracán? Hmm, que es un huracán. Bien, sí. Ah, yeah? uh, Perfecto, perfecto. Uh, yeah, sí. Um, right, anytime we're asking for a definition. So what you want to get to the point uh, uh, or, or where you want to be eventually after enough practice and enough examples is to get to the point where either que or cual is going to feel natural. And one of the things that should start to feel very natural is that If I don't know what this thing is, it chances are it's going to be that que, yeah? Que es, que es asks for a definition. Cual es asks, uh, right? I can use que with es. Uh, I can use cual with es. But cual es asks for a choice out of a homogeneous, they're all similar things homogeneous group. Okay. So that's why it's, cual es la fecha? What's the date? Because there are a set number of days in the year. And, and, you know, this is a way of thinking, really. It, it, in a lot of ways, it's not a rule so much as it is a way of thinking. And their way of thinking of that is grouping the dates all come off a calendar. So it's a homogeneous group of things, yeah? Um, ¿Cuál es? And here's the other thing where we get messed up a lot. You know, we'll say, what's your favorite candy? And what's your favorite candy asks for you to pick a brand or, yeah, yeah. Let's call it a brand, a brand out of all the things that are called candies. You know, it's not asking about pastry versus candy, <laughs> right? It's asking for, hey, out of everything that you would call candy, which one is your favorite? And it would be, ¿cuál es? ¿Cuál es la, tu marca favorita de dulce? What's your favorite brand of candies? So, You could phrase it in English as which is your favorite, but very often in English, we just say, what's your favorite candy? And if you said it as que es, you're asking immediately in that situation for a definition, not for, hey, show me which out of all those brands you like. Yeah, so it's, cual is a way of thinking about the categories there. Mm -hmm. See, you're picking out of a category with cual. Okay. Magnifico. Otros ejemplos. Any other can cual examples? Can I do two of them together to see that I get the difference? Sí, 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 sí. Um, claro. Cual, ¿Cuál es tu libro? Este o aquel? Ah, ¿cuál es tu libro? Perfecto. ¿Cuál es tu libro? Este ah. o aquel? Este o, uh, este o ese, sí. Oh, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I put in accent marks there. You're not supposed to do that anymore with those two, but you used to have to do that. Okay. And, yeah. then, and you're showing two choices. Two sí. choices. And then, ¿qué libro te gusta más? Exacto. ¿Qué libro? Uh, ¿Qué libro te gusta más? Uh, And in English, we would say, which book do you like more? We wouldn't say what book do you like, <laughs> yeah. But 
because again, we're pairing it up with libro noun, right? Because it's a matchup of right next door to the noun. Uh, it's que, que libro. Uh, bien, okay. Um, but now notice if I structure it, and it really depends on kind of how this comes to mind. Uh, ¿cuál, de, ¿Cuál de estos libros uh, te gusta más? Sí. Then you're going to phrase it as ¿Cuál de? Because of that little word de. And those all, all of those ask the same information the first one is visual you're actually showing the two right and then it's qual es because you're showing the two and it's a limited group right the second one we're pairing it up with the noun que libro so que libro uh, but just know there are people in latin america who like to say qual libro it's not it's not always blessed by the Royal Academy of Spanish, but you know, they'll fight about that. So they'll fight about that number two example, but you hear it that way. And cual de, but always cual de. Once that word de comes in, it cannot ever be que de. It's always got to be cual de. Okay, but or cuales de, si? Es posible tener también cuales de, si? Uh, okay. Fantastico. These are good examples. Some buenos ejemplos. Okay. Uh, algo más. Any other examples you want to bring up or no? I'll do one. Um, ¿Qué haces para re, relajarte? ¿Qué haces? Magnífico. ¿Qué haces para relajarte? What do you do to relax? To chill out, yeah. Uh, bien. Uh, ¿Qué haces? ¿Qué haces? Again, asks for uh, an explanation, an explanation, a definition, and the ¿qué haces? feels very natural because you know this is one of the first things we use as as building a question. ¿Qué haces? What are you doing? ¿Qué estás haciendo? What are you doing? Uh, ¿Qué tienes? What do you have there? Yeah. Uh, uh, ¿Qué paired up with a verb that asks for a definition or an explanation? This is, yeah, kind of that explanation idea, isn't it? Explain yourself <laughs> kind of thing. Fantástico. ¿Y algo más, no, Nora, o no? Sí. ¿Cuál, ¿Cuál es tu restaurante favorito en Arizona? Ah, ¿cuál es? ¿Cuál es tu restaurante uh, favorito? Uh, momento. Favorito en Arizona. O en Scottsdale. O en Phoenix. O cualquier otra parte. Sí, en Phoenix. Sí, podemos, podemos decir Phoenix. No importa. Es... Una área. Here, here is here is our category restaurants in this place. Yeah. So, okay. Fantástico. ¿Cuál es? We would never, never, never. Nobody would ever phrase that question as qué es. You're never going to hear a flip side alternative of qué es. We would say, "What's your favorite restaurant?" But that's a homogeneous category. It's 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 a batch of stuff we call restaurants. So it's cuales. Siempre, always. Nobody is going to say, oh, I choose to say this is que es tu restaurante. No. So what happens if you get that wrong? Um, I guess you could say in a way it's no big deal, but it is kind of fuse, confusing to them because, um, you know, they're, they're expecting from cual es a choice. Yeah. And que es always asks for an explanation or a definition. And they're like, do you not understand the word restaurante? Do you not understand what Phoenix is? Is there something here that is misunderstood? Yeah, I see that. Yeah. So it's always going to be cual there. Okay. Magnifico. Algo más. Well, now I have a question about one I thought I was sure about. Okay. Um, 
this is what I wrote, but now I'm thinking it's not right. Qualis ciudades Europa visitaste el verano pasado. Oh, uh, and I thought, well, that's uh, which cities in Europe did you visit? But now it has the noun right next to it. So now, ah. saying, so I, now I have to say, which of the European cities did you visit? Qualis, Qualis. Uh, de las ciudades uh, uh, europeas visitaste. Right. Which of European cities did you visit th that you could do? Uh, but typically, típicamente, que ciudades uh, uh, de Europa or uh, uh, Europa, ah, Europa, or we can plug in there. Uh, uh, que ciudades europeas o que ciudades de Europa visitaste? Okay. Sí, bien. Okay. And yes, here really we've got a noun. Que ciudades, what cities? And in English, see, this is where we get tripped up. You may yep. phrase that as which cities, right? And you would think, well, don't I put in quales? But sure. yeah, if I want to use quales, I've got to have a de and then that group, right? Sure. Que it's ciudades. Hard to get more clear. Here's yeah. my other easy example. Tu pelo, que bonito. Ah, tu pelo. Uh, you know, you they they just know. Wow, uh, qué bonito, qué bonito. How cute! Yeah, you just walked out of the stylist, or you just got home, and oh, stupid. somebody hasn't seen you in a long time, and you ain't got your hair done or cut or whatever. Tu pelo, qué bonito, and that que is really an explanation, right? Uh, you would say, how cute, how cute, how pretty. Right. And that one is not being used in a question, but it's okay. And um, you don't hear qual used in an exclamation. Yeah. Um, so, que bonito. How cute. Que bonito. Uh, que moderno. Ooh. Mi, mira, sí, mira la vista de la ciudad. Qué ciudad, qué moderna. How modern it is. Qué hermosa, how beautiful it is. Qué interesante, how interesting it is. That, that how in an exclamation, how with a description always works. Bien. Excelente. Algo más, anything else? I have one. Sí, okay. Um Paul de estos cacharros quieres que, que sea el niño o la niña. Ah, ¿cuál de y otras? ¿Cuál de? Estos cachorros. Oh, cachorros. Sí, que, puppies. Puppies. Que, ¿Cuál de esos cachorros quieres, uh, quieres o prefieres? Que, sí. que sea. S-E-A. Oh, that it may be? Well, you know what? what? You probably would just leave it there. Okay. The natural thing would be just leave it okay. there. Okay. ¿Cuál de estos cachorros quieres? You know, you're looking at a litter or you're at the shelter, you know, picking up a rescue dog, lo que sea, whatever it may be. Uh, ¿Cuál de esos cachorros? Which of these puppies do you want or do you prefer? But See? If, I, if, if I wanted to say the boy or the girl, how, would you just say el niño o la niña? Ah, 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 ah. Um, hmm. So one is because often people want one sex up versus they want a, a girl dog or a boy dog, right? Mm -hmm. um, Ah, la hembra o oh, el varón. Oh. Boy or girl? Girl or boy? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Hembra, hembra is a female. Okay. Of whatever that is, el varón, the male. 
Th- those are the terms for female, hembra, varón, oh. male. Oh. Uh, Speaking of dogs. Sí. Eso es, sí. Um, uh, and, and yeah, if it's a big, big pool of puppies, you're going to assume that those are it's a mixed sex group, right? So it'll they're going to ha- give the male format for that. Interesting point. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos about this coming out in the last year, and it is sadly, well, I don't know, sadly, it is it is extremely controversial depending on who you talk to. You know, when you're talking about a group of puppies, it's not very controversial about, you know, male and female thing. But now this uh, this whole thing of being gender nonspecific has become come up as a thing. And there are various groups of people fighting. And I'm going to say fighting because it gets heated and it gets kind of nasty. I've seen some comment boxes where it's like, whoa, people got their... Yikes. Yeah, they're angry about it. Um, It has always been a traditional thing to use the masculine version of the word in a group setting when it's a mixed group. That's just been the rule forever. There are now people who don't like that anymore. And and actually, I've been noticing this since I started, oh gosh, really in the last 10 years. So in a very mild, non-controversial way, a lot of the the uh, a lot of the YouTube videos you'll notice or do notice if you haven't that many of the YouTubers will greet people as you know, hola señores, hola señoras, uh, but they'll use both the male and female gender things instead of just giving the male group. Mm-hmm. Uh, automatically, right? Estudiantes doesn't count because estudiantes goes for males and females. So that is, you know, it doesn't have the O at the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but um, um, in other words, if they greet you as fans, I'll say aficionados y aficionadas, right? Hola, chicos. Hola, chicas. There is the most common one. Uh, Buenos días, chicos. Buenos días, chicas. And they'll give both. So the non-controversial way now is to say both the male-oriented word and the female. But now it's getting into the controversial thing of do we do, yeah, do we put in a non-gender specific word? And this has become a very nasty debate. So I'm going to say at this point, kind of, unless you're in a group of 20-ish year old people, don't do it. There are some 20-ish year old groups of people who feel very passionately. One of them is a former student of mine. And she's starting to put the letter E in everything. Chiques instead of chicos. And... And that is a hot button topic, and you're going to get hate mail over that. I, I really, you're going to no, you're you're likely, unless you're in a group of people. So, um, the way that this has been explained to me that makes the most sense. If you hear anybody saying, you know, we don't want to have gender specific pronouns or words, or like it's gone down to the, it, it's filtered down to like instead of saying ellos. And ellas, we should be saying ellas. Stay away from that unless people tell you, I want that. If people want that as a non-gendered term, pronoun, uh, use ellas, then go ahead and use that because they want that and it makes them feel good. So who's it hurting? Exactly nobody, but just as injecting it as everybody ought to do this, you're getting yourself in for a fight. <laughs> it has become, I have seen nasty, cuss them out comments. So mm. if people say they want it, give it to them because it makes them happy and who cares? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. But Yeah. Even some of my old students feel very passionately about it. 
we must make everything non-gender specific. And then you got the other people who say the language has been this way for hundreds of years. What right do you have to go in and change the gen- You can't do it. And so you get people very angry one way or the other. And then they say, well, what do I do? I change everything on, on every adjective. I change bonito to bonites. Uh, what? I Yeah. And you can see how like it screws up your brain the way you're at because you're, you're raised to speak a certain way. So I kind of understand part of that, except, you know, the cussing and getting angry at like, we don't need to go there. Okay. Do you have any other care qual examples you'd like to do? <laughs> see, see. <laughs> Bien. Okay. Vale. Um, ¿Cuáles son las casas en venta? ¿Qué casa <gasps> comprar? Ah. ¿Cuáles son? So you want to know which ones are on for sale on, on the market. ¿Cuáles son las casas en venta? ¿Cuáles son las casas en venta? ¿Qué casa comprar a? Comprar uh, a. Comprar com, a. Oh, comprar a. Will you buy? Will you buy? Sí. Uy, uy, avanza. Mm, uh, eres muy avanzada. You are very advanced. Sí. Uh, ¿Qué? Uh, Ah, I get my finger on the wrong key and it automatically gets me all off. I hate having the touchpad. It gets everything off. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. ¿Qué casa? ¿Qué casa? ¿Qué casa comprará? Uh, which house will you buy? And you can say comprará, like, uh, will you buy? But uh, I will tell you, as a matter of just everyday conversation, people are much more likely to say, uh, ¿Qué casa uh, va a comprar? So they use the, the going to rather than the future tense. Here's here's the preferred. Here's the preferred. Okay. Now, why is that? I'm going to give you just a quickie on that. Uh, ir a infinitive. For everyday chit chat, you talking to anybody verbally, that's the preferred way to go for future. Okay, because you're talking about something uh, uh, you're going to buy. Maybe you're going to buy in three months. Maybe you're going to buy in the next week, in the next two weeks, but cl close-ish, yeah? We're not talking about a year away, two years away from now, right? True future tense, which is this thing here, <laughs> Comprará, comprarás, compraré. True future tense is reserved for quite far out or for formal speech. So if somebody were giving a speech in front of a group of, of colleagues in a business setting, in a scholarly setting, giving a political speech, getting a speech in front of a club, they might go and use future tense there. Or if they think it's like out there in the future, way out there, then they'll plug in that future. Okay. future. It, it's an odd thing. I, and I literally sat in on a group where, again, people almost came to blows. Eight native speakers sitting around a table and yo muy solita, me by myself, the non-native. And a fight broke out over, I don't teach future tense to my students ever. What a waste of my time because nobody uses it. Ah. And then somebody else sits there and says, that's not true. You are wrong. You are so wrong. And don't tell me you're a native speaker and you can't say that. You know, people use future tense. Well, but but <laughs> the truth is, this vas a comprar is very, very, very uh, it is it is so preferred. I'm gonna. Ooh, it is it is so preferred. It is so beloved that I'm gonna put it in red. Okay. If somebody's just talking to you about something and they're not talking way down the line, that's what they're gonna use. The only I thing know, is, I didn't know Marilyn that you were involved in so many politically political. Oh stuff. my God! But see, even native speakers will have. You know, I've I've seen people come to blows over the word brown. 
Oh my God. Yeah. You know, it's like, seriously, we're fighting about the word Brown, you know? Okay. Because you grew up and everybody que says, cafe. yeah, que loco, que loco. Because you, where you grew up, everybody used cafe and where you grew up, everybody used marron. And they say how uncivilized you are that you don't use marron. I'm like, yeah, seriously. Yeah. But people get into, yeah, they, they because this is their pet thing. And they grew up with it this way. It must be right. It must well, be right because my family did it that way. Well, that's the caveat in going up through Duolingo is they don't, I mean, it, future is a very easy one to learn. You know, you learn yeah. it, dang, it's right there, but they don't give you those nuances and tell yeah. you that's not the way so, most yeah. people talk. Duolingo is going to throw out something to you every once in a while, and you'll see a, a, a future tense. But really, really, when people are just talking about what's going to happen pretty soon, they're not going to use that future tense to just talk. And so, okay, if you use that, are you wrong? No, you're not wrong. It doesn't make you wrong. But people might think sounds a little formal, a little stiff, a little stiff. Yeah, yeah, a little. Yeah, yes. Okay, so here, here's a good example in English. If, if I, um, if I sat down uh, uh, to order something at a restaurant, and I said, "Well, what shall we have?" Yeah. To the American ear, what shall we, what shall we order? Yeah. Sounds a little. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it? Is it wrong? No. Does Is there any misunderstanding? No. But how many of your friends say that? But what shall we do? <laughs> it's just for where we grew up, for how we grew up speaking, it sounds a little formal, perhaps a bit stiff. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong about it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Just saying. Okay. Uh, hay otros ejemplos o no? Any other one or no? Si? No? Si? No? I have eh? one real quickie, which I, okay. the first one I did <laughs> working on this. And I just thought, you know, what's the craziest thing I can come up with? And so here we go. ¿Cuál es el significado de la vida? Oh. <laughs> oh, you will not use qual. Oh, okay. KSL significado de la vida. This is a great, uh, this is an excellent example. Uy, que ejemplo interesante. And I chose qual que... because it has S immediately after it. Ah, entiendo. I understand why, where you're coming from there. Okay. Uh, típicamente, typically. ¿Qué es el significado uh, de la vida? What is the meaning of life? <laughs> A very philosophical question. And the fact that it is a very philosophical question is why you use que. Because I'm saying, explain yourself. Uh, yeah. What's the meaning of life isn't a choice out of finite things. It might be love. It might be a check for a million dollars. It might be a happy family. It might be uh, uh, preventing the collapse of the world's climate but it's not a it's not a homogeneous group yeah yeah um uh yeah that is asking for a definition or an explanation what what you're saying makes perfect sense especially after the, this morning's discussion but I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if I threw that one into the Google Translate and it gave me qual. I'll, I'll have to check later. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, that, yeah, that would to me sound. So a lot of times you'll see in books when they explain qual, 
uh, they'll say qual is paired up with uh, with es or with de. And ooh, these are big clue, like uh, hot button words. And you pair up qual with es, you pair up qual with de. But we hear que with es a lot. I, we don't ever use que right next to de. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, but que es. So here, if, if you read that or you see it in some sort of Duolingo related thing, que es asks, uh, asks for a definition or an explanation. Yeah. And cual uh, es asks, boy, I can type today, uh, asks for a choice out of a group of items. And it's Mark, and, and, to respuesta. KS, my, what is it? What's your answer to that question? Oh. ¿Qué es tu respuesta? ¿Qué, ¿Qué es la respuesta? ¿Qué es la wow. respuesta? What, yeah. ¿Qué es, uh, yeah. ¿Qué es la respuesta? What's the answer? Uh, but yeah, you know, there you're asking for something. It's really kind of a, yeah. Um, yeah. So es by itself isn't enough to pick a K or a qual. We've got to be thinking uh, like deep, the deep underpinnings. And que es el significado, sí. Uh, um, yeah, it depends. If it's an explain yourself kind of thing, it's going to be K. If it's pick something out of a group, it's qual. That's what it boils down to. Um, okay. Buenos ejemplos. What good examples. Okay. Bien. Um, okay. Hay más? Any more? Si? No? Si? No? Okay. Show and tell time? Si? Bien. Show and tell time. Con permiso. Con permiso. Regreso en, en un minuto con mi cosita. I'm going to let you uh, grab an item. I'll be right back. Sí, sí, tengo que ir. Uy, a ver, ¿dónde está? Diane. Yes. Sí. Mi también tengo tu dese. Ah, ok. Me gusta vale. mucho. Bueno, bueno, ok. ¿Quién quiere, ¿Quién quiere hablar de una cosa? Do not show us what the thing is. See if you can give us some clues. Tell us what it is about. Leave your kicker clue that's going to be the give it away at the end. Trish. Okay. Mi artículo es blanca, uh, negro. I don't know if it's male or masculine. <laughs> um, I'll put an E on it. Blanco, blanco y negro? Yeah, y plástico. Y pla es de plástico. Es de plástico. Mm. You want otra? O más? Okay. Es, sí, uh, es, es un artículo que se usa en la casa o fuera de la casa? En la casa. En la casa. En la casa. Es un artículo. En la ah, sí, en la cocina. No. Should I say where I would go? No, uh, se us uso en, en la mañana. Se no, usa la por la mañana. Se uh, usa por la mañana. Es de plástico blanco y negro. Uy, ay, ay, ay. Uh, um, tiene Have you seen sombrero de ducha? <gasps> what? No, no. <laughs> uh, this isn't my clue, but está en mi baño. A scale? No. No. Um, tiene el tiempo si la mañana y de la noche. Mm. ¿Es un reloj? No. Cepillar de los dientes. Uh, no. Cepillo de dientes. No es cepillo de dientes. No. Es de plástico. 
Sí, puedo. ¿Está en el baño? Sí. ¿Siempre está en el baño? ¿Siempre? Sí. This is fun. Puedo abrirlo y cerrarlo. Oh, open and close it. Se puede abrir y se puede cerrar. Una caja de makeup. No. Oh, no. maquillaje, makeup. No. no. Se llena, puede vaciar. I can't even remember what that means. But vacía, <laughs> empty. <Yes. laughs> um, okay, this one might help. Tienen es un taza? La... Sí. Es, es un taza? Una o... taza? Una, una, una taza? No. No. Tiene la primera letra de cada día de la semana impresa ah. en ella. Oh, ¿es una cajita para pastillas? Sí, oh. I think so. What's pastillas? Ah, pastillas. Pills. Mm. Sí. Oh. 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 Sí. Oh, oh, qué difícil. Ay, qué Muy difícil. Divertido. Oh, qué buen artículo. Trish. Oh. Ay. ¿Por qué? Por mi, porque mi caja no blanco y negro. Oh. Oh. Sí. Entonces, es posible que la cajita de pastillas, es posible que sea, it is possible that it might be, es posible que sea de varios colores, sí, sí. pero... Sí. Sí. Blanco y negro, sí, es muy normal. Sí, es muy normal. What's sí. the word that you used for pills? Pastillas, pastillas. Una cajita de pastillas. Uh, pastillas. Uh, uh, there are two terms you might hear. I, I creo que pastilla. Pastillas y se escribe, yeah, how you escribe that, uh, how, how, como se escribe, how you write it, see, uh, because you've got a ya, 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 there are different things you might put in there, right? Uh, pastillas, pills, mm. yeah, uh, as in medications. Uh, you know what, there are different words you might hear for a medicine, yeah? Pastillas, if it's a pill form, uh, Hildora, uy, momentito. Booted me out of my keyboard. That's what mine Hildora, came up with. Hildora mm -hmm. is also a pill. Mm -hmm. I, I think pastilla is a little more common. Uh, on occasion, uh, medicamentos. I think you hear this term more if you are, let's say, in a doctor's office. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if they want to know what your prescriptions are. Yeah. In that frame, as they want to know the brand of pill, the type of medication, it might be framed as medicamentos. Uh, but pastillas are just pills, right? If you're just talking generic. Okay. Bien. What, what did you call the, the actual container that, that Trish was describing? La cajita. Cajita. It's a little box. Caja, little box, right? Caja, box, but you know, we're not talking like, you know, UPS size box. Yeah. Cajita would indicate it's, it, it, it is a little box. Yeah. It's not huge. Cajita is, cajita es un término muy, muy perfecto porque es una, es de tamaño así, bien, sí, de tamaño así, like that kind of size. Okay. Bien. Bueno, a ver, fantástico. Qué buen artículo, Trish. Ay, él es muy lista. You are clever. Ok. Uh, bueno, ¿quién? ¿Quién? Uh, siguiente, siguiente. Next person. Next person up. Ok. Ok. Bueno, Diana. Um, es una comida muy deliciosa. ¿Eh? Se puede... Preparar uh, en muchas maneras diferentes. A veces está duro o a veces está suave. 
What does mm. suave mean? Soft? Si. Si. Mm. Helado? Helado. Es helado? el helado. No, no. no. Helado. Es, es una comida nutritiva sí. o es comida ca mm. chatarra, es a junk food. No, no. Nut nut nutritiva. Nutritiva. Suave. Si puedo comer para el desayuno o el almuerzo o a la cena. Hmm. De desayuno, de almuerzo o de, de la cena. I know. Hang on, let me look it up. <laughs> wow. Coquino. Los huevos. Tocino. Ah, Jan. Oh, perdón, Jen, ¿qué, qué un dijiste? Huevo. Oh, un huevo, un huevo, ah, sí, suave, ah, la, la ok. La próxima es blanco en oval, ovaldada. Ah, ovaldada. bien, 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 mm. bien, bien. Ok, um, let me show you yet. Yeah. Well, we're getting to lots of good vocabulary here. Um, otra vez, again, I'm going to show you a, a vocabulary that is very, I wouldn't expect you to know this because this would be tough to figure out. Um, oh, it's going to make me bring up a new box. If we want to say soft, you're going to look up the word soft. And this is usually what you see, suave, right? Soft. But there's a nuance to this. Suave is soft like, ooh, este suéter es muy suave. Okay. Mm. Oh, por ejemplo, oh, mi animal de peluje, muy suave, muy suave. Ah, ooh, qué, qué, qué frustrante. Mi Pelo no es muy suave. Mi pelo no es muy suave. Sí. Pero con comida, with food, the word you're going to hear more than suave is this word. Blando. Blando. Oh. Ah. You're going to hear this word more to say soft for food. Soft is like for, um, the feel, okay. uh, like fuzzy, uh, um, yeah, you know, the feel, good sí. thing. Sí. So if you mean soft is in the consistency, oh, yeah, this is more like consistency, right? Okay. When we talk about food being soft, um, not, like, not runny, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Blando. Sí. You're going to hear that word more. Ah. Para que sepas. Oh, Gracias. sí. Estamos aprendiendo Gracias. vocabulario. Wow, we're, we're learning vocab with this, ¿sí? Um, okay. Excelente. Siguiente, siguiente. Next. Mar Marcos, Marcos. Dinos sí. algo. Mi café es café de caucho. Rubber, caucho. Caucho. Ah, uh, okay. Es de uh, el material. El material. Ah, uh, bien. Caucho, goma. Ah, uh, goma. Ah, uh, sí, un material como. Sí, okay. Uh, I would use goma, but sí, caucho se puede usar. Sí, bien. Okay. Okay. Mi, mi esposa lo compró en Linea, en Linea, en nuestro lugar, online, our place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm being es a little un, stingy with the information now. Sí. ¿Es un pelota? No. Mm. Uh, es redonda. Approximately 10 pulgadas de diametro. 
it's it's round approximately and that's the longest word in spanish i've ever said approximadamente approximadamente uh, 10 inches in diameter the in oh hmm it's right de qué color uh azul azul yeah. or um importa Gray, gray. Um, gris. Gris. Uh, gris. ¿El color se importa o le importa o no le importa? No le importa. No importa, no importa. No importa el color. Ok. Por, uh, la, uh, afuera de la casa o el dentro? Se, se no, usa. In, uh, coming to that, usa en la casa. Okay. En la casa. Es, es, es una cosa que se usa en un cuarto específico de la casa. Um, o no importa. No importa. En la cocina. En la cocina. Ok. Ok, how about now? Um, es delgado. Aproximadamente un cuarto de pulgada. It's it's thin, about one quarter inch. Oh, un cuarto. Un cuarto de pulgada. Se usa para cocinar y se usa es, para, es, para cocinar. Sí. Es, es una cosa para abrir una frasca? Oh. No. Oh. No. Sí, es el DC de la DESA, sí, que se usa para abrir. <risa> Cuando es difícil abrir y <risa> enrollar, <risa> sí, ya. Yeah, uh, uh, um. No, no <risa> es eso. It's 10 inches diameter. Oh, is it plano o redondo? Uh, es redondo. Redondo. Oh. Or um, redonda, I'm not sure. Pero un cuarto, pero uh, um, sí, pero un cuarto de pulgada, quarter inch, sí. Mm -hmm. Entonces sí es. Right. For those, the, the engineer in me, it's, it's ten inches diameter, but a quarter inch thick. Y redondo. Y no se abre la cara. Uy. Para, para cubre los uh, uh, bolts. Bolas. Bolas. Ah. Okay. okay. Como tapa, like a, a lid. Una tapa es una tapa. Um, más o menos. Es una tapa. Los cacerolas uh, calientes. Ah, uh, sí. Let me, let me read one more clue, okay? Um, well, I got two more clues and then I can give it away. Lo, lo usamos cuando cocinamos en una sartén. When I am cooking. Mm. Keep the grease sí. from flying? Es, yeah. es una tapa. That's sí. It. That's it. Ah. It's, it. Oh. It's, it's a cover. ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Cómo se llama? Sí. Es. Oh. 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 Pero ¿cómo se ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Cómo se llama en inglés? No, no sé tampoco en inglés. ¿Cómo se? Sí. Splatter screen. Splatter screen. Ah, sí. Screen, sí. Una tapa, wow. sí. Una tapa, una tapa para, para contener la grasa, la grasa de cocinar y el aceite y todo eso. ¡Ay, wow! ¡Wow! Mm. ¡Qué difícil! Ok, vale, muy bien. Uh, siguiente. ¿Anybody else can for me? Sí. ¿Alguien más? Sí, ¿no? Uh, I can do no. mine. I, yeah. Ok. After all of these great guessing games, I'm... I'm hanging on with my fingernails, so mine is going to be easy. <laughs> Mi cosa es azul, pero la color no importa. Okay, el, el color no importa. Okay. Todo el mundo lo tiene. Everybody has. 
a me, me cosa uh, hace de plástico. Pero es de plástico. Tu cosa hace de uh, vaso. I don't know how you say glass. Vaso. Oh, my... vidrio. When you drink out of it, it's vaso. But when it's a, like in your window right. or it's a, a, a decorative thing, you know, you're not drinking out of it. Vidrio. Vidrio. Okay. Vidrio con, con bechica with a V. Vidrio. Es de vidrio. Es de vidrio. Okay. Es de vidrio. Tú. Tu cosa. Uh, Puede pero, ser de yeah. vidrio. Pone las flores en tu cosa? No. ¿Dónde mm. está en su casa? ¿Dónde está en su casa? Sí. No. Uh, ¿Dónde está en su casa? Use your lamente as in mi ca uh, cocina. En la cocina. Pero um, a veces en frente de la tele. En frente de la tele. <laughs> oh. Mm. Um, el, el vaso del vino. <laughs> 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 That's a good guess. You right, got the right idea. I see, bien. Okay. Oh, a veces lo uso para hacer galletas. Oh. oh. Y también lo uso para mi ensalada. A bowl. A bowl? A bowl. Yeah, my bowl. Oh, okay. Ah, bien. Sometimes uh, you eat in front of the TV. Sí, se usa yeah. la palabra así, bol, o cuenco, o tazón, y depende del país. It really, which word you use for bowl? This is one of those things like fighting over the word brown a little bit. Uh, but, pero, sí. Um, se dice bol, bol, se, uh, uh, momentito, bol. Yeah, I think I found several words. Sí, tazón, uh, cuenco, cuenco, a veces sí se usa cuenco. Um, there are different words that are used for ball. Uh, bien. Ah, one thing I want to point out, see, when we want to talk about what something is made out of, um, you can, yeah, there are long ways and shorter ways of doing that. So when you want to say made out of, and even if you want to say it's plastic, it's wooden, it's glass, <laughs> it's metal. You know, in English, we just say it's metal. And if what I mean in is, is it's made out of, I won't just use, say, es metal. Because es metal means, you know, like steel, iron, copper, bronze, whatever. That, yeah. Uh, when you want to say is made out of, we need this magic word. De. De. Es de metal. See, it, this is the short way of saying what something is made out of. Uh, es de madera, it's made out of wood. Es de plástico. Uh, uh, es de vidrio. Or you might hear also people using cristal mm. for glass. Yeah, yeah, that regionally people may say cristal also. Uh, bien. Okay. When we want to say something is made out of, English can take words like wood and make it into wooden. But you can say it's a wood bowl, it's a wooden bowl. Okay. You can say it's a metal bowl. You could say it's a plastic bowl. We cannot take materials in Spanish and make it into an adjective. Mm -hmm. So the cut to the chase thing is that this word here is very magical. It will always tell you what something is made out of. Uh, 
Now, if you want to get like super fancy, um, see, um, está hecho or está hecha, it uh, is made out of, yes, okay. Okay. Yes, you can make it a longer phrase, but you're still going to have that magic word day. <laughs> okay, so that day, uh, so the short answer is that is that if you want to not have to think super hard about it, because when we speak and we got to pick a word quickly out of our brains, we want to mm -hmm. grab whatever is easiest, right? This is the easiest. Whenever when I, I want to say it's a plastic thing, it's a metal thing, it's a wooden thing, it's es de, right? Or if you got a bunch of items, right? Son. De. Okay. Uh, um, uh, si. Uh, es de cerámica. Yeah. If it's, you know, yeah, ceramic kind of thing, right? See, si? Bien. Es de, es de, es de. De es la palabra mágica. Uh, it, it is the magic word. De tells mm -hmm. us the material. Okay. Magnifico. Uh, bueno, ok uh, ¿Algo más? Jan, ¿tienes algo o no? Sí, sí, sí Bien, fantástico, dinos Esto es algo colorido que compré en una tienda de regalos en Bisbee, Arizona mm. Bisbee Es un recuerdo It's a souvenir Okay. Esta hecha de madera. Uh, oh, es de madera. Es es de madera. Okay. Esta hecha, oh, esta hecha de madera. Wow. Uh, es cuadrada. Square? Sí. Sí, sí. Mm. sí. Se abre. I don't know. Es una word. caja. Sí, sí, es una caja. Um, okay. Jan, uh, what was the word you described it before you said it was a box? It is cuadrada. 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 Oh, okay. Square. Se abre. Okay. Okay, here's my list. Contiene algo que me gusta beber. Oh, something you mm. like to drink. A box. <laughs> hey, Bisbee. <laughs> a box for something you like to box. drink. Box. Elvino. A, a barrel of, you bought a barrel <laughs> of wine in Bisbee? <laughs> they have booze bomb down there in the old <laughs> Um, Un caja para el té. Oh, oh, oh. Un, una caja, una. Sí. Ah, yeah. Maybe Bisbee wasn't such a good clue. Okay. Ah, <laughs> no, so good. Bien. Okay. Ay, qué magnífico. Okay. Um, Uh, se puede usar, sí, hablando otra vez de vocabulario, vocabulario. When, when we're talking about something like that, you know, the simplest thing you might use is caja, of course. Uh, ooh. Bien. Uh, caja es, es una palabra muy directa. Caja, sí, box. Uh, uh, una palabra que se puede usar para muchas cosas, sí, todo el mundo entiende caja, caja, bien. Uh, pero cuando hablamos de té, uh, muchas veces cuando es, es, cuando contiene una selección de varios tipos, de té. Sí. Sí, sí, sí. Se usa el término en inglés como a chest of tea, ¿no? Bien. Ok. Entonces, una palabra más específica que caja es 
esta palabra, ¿sí? El cofre. Cofre, cofre, sí. Cofre es una palabra muy más específica uh, como chest. Uh, 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 mm, no es tan grande como baúl. Baúl would be like a trunk. Hmm. No, para te, no, 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 no. Baúl, mm -hmm. sí, un trunk, sí, algo que se pone en, en una habitación con, por ejemplo, con la, uh, pongo mi uh, ropa de invierno en el cofre, uh, en el, en, no en el cofre, en el baúl, en el baúl uh, uh, hasta hasta diciembre aquí en Arizona, ¿no? ¿Ok? Pero cofre es buena, buena palabra, buena palabra para esto, ¿sí? Uh, uh, es un, un cofre de té, es una caja de té. Uh, the two words are totally okay to use, but cofre would really, cofre would automatically make somebody think it's hinged like that, ¿yeah? Que tiene tapa, that it's got a top. That's hinged. That's a cofre. Yeah. Uh, cofre. Uh, you know, it might not be hinged, but nowadays it probably would be. Sí. Ay, qué magnífico. Okay. Carolyn, is the el cofre, is that specific to like teas or it could be anything like a hinged box like that? Like a okay. Lot of, Un ejemplo. A, lot of, a lot of jewelry boxes are like that. Exacto. Sí. Sí, por ejemplo, otro ejemplo, momentito, momentito. Um, en mi casa muy sucia, tengo muchas cosas así. Ah, ah, es un cofre. Es un cofre, sí. Es un cofre. Con varias cosas. Tiene en, en mi cofre si sí, hay. Ay, euro, no, es. <risa> tengo pestañuelos, tengo. Tengo. Ay, uh, na, naipes, tengo como paquetes <risa> postales. Es para cositas. Ah, nada más. Pero es un cofre, ¿sí? Es un cofre. Um, it was a great story I used to use for my teenage students when they got to third year Spanish. And it was a medieval story about uh, a woman who was abducted by some uh, Moorish invaders in medieval Spain. And, She ransoms her father's life by promising to marry some dude she doesn't want to marry. And uh, in the end, they use the word cofre because she cut off my hand. She said, I'll give you my hand because the key was she I give you my hand oh. yeah, in marriage. So rather than disgrace her honor of marrying an infidel, because in those days, yeah, she cut her hand off. <laughs> and in the cafe, you know, and I bring this box into class and the kids go, uh, you know, and the last the last line of the story is and he opened the box and she said, you will you will have my hand, but you will never have my heart. And there <laughs> lay the bloody hand. And, oh, God. and, you know, every every 17 year old boy was like, yeah. <laughs> la mano sangrienta wow the bloody hand la, me gusta wow me gusta okay mi cosita my thingy si mi dese mi dese okay um, esto es la cosa que tengo aquí conmigo es es un dispositivo es un aparato es un aparato, ¿ok? Um, pero 
no es algo muy común. Uh, en otra forma, en, en una forma más grande, es muy común y todo el mundo tiene esta cosa en su casa. Uh, por lo menos una. ¿Ok? Pero... La forma mía que tengo aquí es una forma muy chiquitita. Mm. ¿Ok? Bien. Um, es una cosa que... Um, generalmente se usa fuera en al aire libre. Al aire libre por lo general. Quizás, quizás. Si eres plomero, muy útil dentro de la casa. Pero para, para la persona normal se usa al aire libre. ¿sí? Uh, necesita pilas. Pilas. La, uh, la, um, necesita pilas. Uh, uh, se puede apagar y prender, prender y apagar, prender y apagar. Hmm. La forma mía es una forma que se usa para personas que hacen cosas que, que, que dan caminatas. En las montañas, que montan en bicicleta. Oh, is it a flashlight? Es una, ah, es una cosa que sí, sí, que se usa por la... Ah, es una oh. linterna, pero es una forma de linterna, sí, linterna que se pone que se pone oh. aquí arriba ah, hmm. durante una caminata por la noche si cuan, a, al atardecer when the sun is setting sí y tú estás perdido and you are lost hmm. y hay que caminar una mía más hasta llegar al carro. Ok, eso es. Bien. Es una linterna muy, muy, muy pequeña que se pone sí, aquí en la frente para ver el sendero. To see your trail. Para ver el sendero. Ah, bien, sí. Bueno, Nora, uh, sabía que serías tú. I knew it was going to be you. Ok. Uh, <laughs> We've got three or four of those. Yeah. Sí. Pero es posible usar, si eres plomero, if you're a plumber, sí, eh, y, sí mm. y estás mm. trabajando, sí, debajo, debajo del fregadero uh, mm. en la cocina o en el baño y no puedes ver muy bien y no hay luz, entonces sí es muy útil. Ok, a ver, bien. Uh, bueno, a I have ver. a question about our class coming up sí, next sí, session. Sí. Since it'll be more than just the five or six of us, are you going to backtrack a little bit or maybe choose a, a little book for us to read? Or what do you think we'll cover? Well, I haven't really decided about a book yet. I think more like articles. I like that. Things that are short. I think that is uh, easier. It doesn't require you to buy anything. Uh, well, I know my neighbor, Carrie, was wondering if this was the right class for her. She's already too far behind, you know, whatever. You know what? In a sense, backtracking, if anybody uh, 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 practice it's with always past, for me. it's always going to, there's always going to be a certain amount of backtracking with past for this reason. Honestly, uh, uh, the past is such a vast topic that mm -hmm. if you don't, If you don't recycle that information, uh, it is impossible to get good at it. 
-hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. unless you're a real Mensa, like genius person, you Mm -hmm. know, and even then, uh, and I will say for people who are, uh, well, you know, even for people who are used to like, like, let's say you grew up with German or you grew up with French as your native language, even for them, it requires them learning those new conjugations. So there, there's going to be a certain amount of recycling. Good. Okay. But there'll probably be more article reading type of thing. And you know what? If anybody gets in and like, let's say they signed up for this and then they feel like over their head, uh, just get, you know, tell me that. And I say, then I'll send you the Monday Zoom link. No biggie. No biggie. No biggie. At some point, could we do a little bit more with direct and indirect objects? Oh, yeah. Yeah. that is a tough one and that again is hard to get used to yes yeah and the reason it's hard is that uh english has those but we use the same set of pronouns so the pronouns always tell you it or her or him yeah or us so you always know if it's a human being or if it's a thing and because because uh yeah be, because some of those you know like was like lo and mean it or him yeah we get all this confusion so therefore in spanish it is more necessary to know if it's an indirect object in english you don't really need to know if it's an indirect or direct object you just need to know if it's talking about an inanimate object it versus a, a human being it'll be a him or a her yeah and then it doesn't matter so yeah we can absolutely do more with that uh that always needs work bien okay vale oh checking my time i wanted to ask you guys if there were, because this had some funky structures in here. I, hmm, I have alguna pregunta. Is there any kind of question? I have alguna pregunta de este video. Anything that you had from this thing? It was talking about the discovery. I did send you this one, right? See? ¿Sí? ¿Es este? Was this I didn't one? Watch it. No. <clears throat> no? I have, I, this is the I one have. about Columbus Day, right? Or Columbus. See. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is, uh, yeah. That's the one. See. I mean, I, I, I thought it it was actually very interesting listening to that. And and I guess I just want to ask you, is is there really and I say this out of ignorance, really, is it is there really that hard of feelings amongst people living in the you know Central and South American countries? Yes, very hard feelings. Even even in many cases, if they come from, let us say, more of a European background. Uh, uh, yes. Um, the, uh, to the point of, yeah. Although, although, you know what, you will always get that segment of people who say, well, this has been done for hundreds of years this way. Why are we getting getting our pants all <laughs> tied up in a knot over the yeah, over this? So you will get that. Okay, so I'll give you an example. In Mexico City, there was a statue to Columbus that was taken down. And in its place was put a sculpture, very large sculpture. This is a public air, square area of um, uh, an indigenous woman's head. And it was chosen that it should be a female because, <laughs> because you know, uh, birthing the generations to come kind of feel and it should be indigenous woman and all of that and there was some element of the public that was sort of incensed of well but this is part of our culture that you know um uh you, you know was this historical figure or was it 
yeah, was it Columbus or was it um, hmm, Cortes? I, uh, Cortes. Uh, it, it was one of those conquistador kind of guys. Yeah. And um, so there, there, there is always, as we have our own culture war kind of issues, there are people who say, well, why are we brown beating ourselves over this? It is history. It is the way it is. But there are people who feel very, very, very strongly about um, the European culture being superimposed uh, um, to such an extreme. Because, okay, and the reason it gets very vehement, and there is a very big block of people who really do resent it, is that the, uh, depending on which Latin American country you go to, the percentage of people who are mestizo, meaning mixed blood, racially, you, you know, you got some European heritage, some indigenous heritage, uh, you know, it, it it skews around. You go to Argentina, Argentina, and you get in a lot of areas. Wow, lots of Italians, lots of Germans, lot you know, Spanish, like all, all kinds of mix. But then you go to areas like Peru, Ecuador, certainly uh, Mexico, uh, Bolivia. Uh, you've got a very, very high percentage of people with indigenous background and various mixtures. Uh, uh, and it is something that, uh, because people have a, a variety of, uh, you know, any di many different kinds of racial mixtures in their own family backgrounds, they feel very strongly about this because the, amount of really when they say the word genocide that is kind of accurate um at, certainly in the caribbean by the time okay columbus made what was it three visits by visit number two the original taino people in that were almost like 90 percent wiped out wow 90 percent it pretty damn high and uh some of this is just plague, like, oh, sorry, we didn't mean to give you smallpox. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know if it's true, but then, you know, the counter thing to that was, well, then we were given syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you this, Europeans. Hey, yeah, go have fun with that. I don't know how true that end of it is, but I think there's this grain of truth to it. So anyway, some of this was uh, a matter of actual... Uh, uh, you know, plague illnesses uh, that certainly people did not intentionally think that was going to happen. The, you know, the COVID-19 of their day, uh, only worse. Um, but a lot of it really was to this issue of forcing people to accept, uh, uh, forcing people into a situation where mm -hmm. they're, Culture, the uh, cultural identity was attempted to be wiped out. You must become good little Christians. A and you had kind of people arguing both sides. And the only reason we really know this is that there were chroniclers, uh, people who chronicled the, uh, who went in with the conquistadores uh, and, uh, and the explorers. And they did chronicle a lot of absolute, uh, you know, pe debasing people into slavery conditions, uh, beating them to produce them, you know, work. And boy, once that sugarcane was introduced, boom, it was the cotton thing of the South. You had to have high amount of, of uh, intensive labor and the Spaniards are, we're not going to do that work. What are you crazy? We're going to cut sugarcane? Are you nuts? You know, that like swept through the Caribbean and the northern part of uh, Central America. And people were basically either as indigenous people or uh, 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 African slaves brought in to do the heavy lifting. Um, but in terms of the culture, yeah, you know, there was an attempt really, the, the attempt was made to impose religion, impose language, which... The language part largely worked, but there you have all these little pockets in South America, people who speak Quechua, people who speak even in, in Mexico, various 
types of uh, indigenous languages are still, uh, it's kind of a struggle, but being preserved. So there's a lot of resentment. And uh, I would never go into any country in South America and um, bring up a whole lot about Colon, Columbus. Mm -hmm. It is very, and it is seen as an intentional attempt to wipe out a culture. And also an intentional thing of saying, hey, look, you know, 50, 70, 80%, depending on the country of the population, has indigenous uh, uh, family, racial background. And hey, we count for nothing. The only thing that's good is the culture that you brought from white guy Europe. So, yeah. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I think in Spain, it used to be called kind of like a Columbus thing, and they've changed it to Dia de la Raza or Dia de la Hispanidad, even in Spain. Even in Spain, they walk, they're walk they walking on eggshells, mm -hmm. and they want to call it Hispanic World Day. Like, oh, we share similarities in culture. We share language and brotherhood of man. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even there, it's very soft-pedaled. Because they want to be welcome when they come in as tourists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, um, it, it, I, I hope I didn't cut you off there, but I just no. it from my own experience when I was when I was much younger, um, we used to go to Puerto Rico a lot, and in the San Juan area, and like this main plaza as you enter San Juan, is Plaza Colon. Yeah. And I just kind of you know. Certainly, maybe I, I wasn't looking and didn't notice, but I, even in a recent, more recent visit, meaning like within the last 20 years, <laughs> I didn't notice. I mean, it's not like it had been renamed or anything like that. Yeah, it's, um, oh, yeah, you'll still see place names up with, you know, names of people and, you know, Ponce de Leon and all of those guys. Yeah. Uh, um, it's not like, you know, they'll change every street name or anything like that. But um, as many things were named after people who were came in as explorers or who came in as as original, you know, were given lands by the crown, you know. Um, but uh, there is a deep resentment amongst a very high percentage of the population to um, you cannot just sweep under the rug the cultures that came before. Um, yeah, you know, it's the thing of the Americas. Uh, I, I, I am kind of surprised when I talk to Canadian friends, which how strong some of that feeling is amongst Canadians. And of course there, they call it first nation right. as the indigenous groups. Yeah. And when somebody's got background of, they have like people from like background of first people nation. Wow. They kind of bristle. It's like, well, let's not discount the uh, bad things were done to all kinds of people in our continents. And it doesn't matter if it was, you know, the English, the French doing it to people, the Spaniards, there were people, dis non people. And, you know, if you want to take it back to Europe, there are, People doing bad things to people, to each other in Europe. It's like people are people. Uh, but yeah, there's resentment in, amongst many. But part of it is, too, the fact that, uh, you know, it's that whole argument of who got here first. <laughs> you know, there are different people who got two different parts of the Americas at different times. And uh, yeah. See. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Is there any other? Oh, wait, quiet. Some of us, some of us don't say you made it. Wow, we're up to 11.30. Any other little questions before we leave? We've got, next week, we've got time off. See. Time off. Time for me to finish pulling my weeds before the big heat comes. <laughs> that big push to pull those weeds. Uh, anything else before we leave today? No. Oh, no. Gracias. No. Yeah. And we'll just recycle a lot of things. We'll do some uh, very fun stuff for, you know, dipping in and, and uh, uh, 
uh, icebreaker get to know you kind of things. And if there, we got some new, depending on how many new people are in, because there'll still be probably some add-ons in the next two weeks. Uh, that right. will still happen. Okay. Is that in? Throw it in. All good. Yes, yes. A video for the interim, a little video for the interim. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excelente. Uh, I got one set up. Why is? Ooh, sí. Una visita a Cuba. Ooh. Oh, El bien. video es de una mujer española que, que fue de visita a Cuba. Mm. Y uh, uh, lo que ella uh, piensa eh, ella está pensando en su visita a Cuba y sus impresiones de Cuba. Uh, sí, sí. Uh, de la cultura de España con la cultura cubana y la política de Cuba y todo eso. Bien. Sí, gracias.